Importantly, how we do this and how we drive uh, change in corporations and in society um, are corporate scorecards. Um, and those have been published in Fast Company magazine in 2007 and 2008. You can go to fastcompany.com slash investing to check it out. Um, and we've been um, privileged to advise Walmart as part of a large group of um, uh, advisors, including Blue Sky Consulting and Environmental Defense Fund and some academic professors to help design their supplier scorecard um, that's been rolling out among Walmart's um, 60,000 plus supplier base. Um, and Nike, as you might have read earlier this week, uh, has uh, officially launched the Green Exchange with Best Buy and Yahoo. Um, and so we contributed to the development of that intellectual property exchange led by um, um, some great innovators at Nike uh, to do things like commercialize their water-based adhesive technology um, and to move away from uh, chemical-based um, uh, components. Okay, so when as a uh, manager, um, and this leads to the metrics, so great metrics um, solve human problems. Um, so this is Maslow's hierarchy of needs, uh, which go from, you know, eating food and water to uh, developing a great um, society. And you're probably familiar with the balanced scorecard by professors Kaplan and Norton um, at Harvard. Um, uh, the, and so this has you know, been going on for multiple decades. But the challenge with the balanced scorecard today, or even EVA, economic value added, or other measurement systems and corporations, is they don't always integrate the human, social, or environmental aspects. Now, what we'll see in um, our learning session here is that um, human, social, and environmental impacts, when you increase them, actually contribute uh, and drive not only bottom line profit, but possibly higher profit margins than not um, looking for those factors. So what you can come up with is a balanced scorecard uh, that adds another component around sustainability. All right, so how we do this at Hip Investor, and we'll show you how other companies do this as well, is we think there's five critical human needs that companies can solve, um, both in their products, through their operating metrics, in and in their supply chain, and embed those into their management practices. So those five categories are health and wealth, earth and equality, and trust. Health is around physical health and mental agility. Wealth is how do you build income and assets for your customers, not only as a financial institution, but let's say Kroger Grocery has financial um, uh, services that they sell in their retail stores. Um, on the earth side, uh, there's leaders like Interface that have saved a cumulative of $400 million by coming up with carbon efficient solutions, as well as companies like GE that have 80 products driving $17 billion worth of revenue. And they put that in both their annual report as well as their sustainability report. On the equality side, to have a high-performing uh, company, you actually need an ecosystem of balanced uh, gender, ethnicity, and income classes. Most markets are a balance between men and women. Society is half men and half women. But the board structures and leadership structures and even management structures of many companies may not mimic their customer base nor their supplier base. And so uh, when that happens, those companies tend to not only be leaders, but to outperform financially. And finally, on the trust, transparency, and ethics side, um, and if you're engaged in social media like Twitter or Facebook or others, um, there's actually been research now that the more transparent that companies are and the more they share how they make decisions, like uh, we'll see with Alcoa and how they make capital spending decisions using a triple bottom line analysis, then the higher revenue growth, profit growth, and actually shareholder value growth that they have. Um, and so on the right-hand side, the business benefits are compelling. Uh, more innovative products that drive your top-line revenue. Um, more inspired people that help you innovate new products and serve customers um, in an excellent way. A higher profit, uh, which we'll show you in a second as to how that works, and an improved planet. So you could use this as a form of a balanced scorecard for your company um, and to really do that at the board, executive, management, and frontline levels. And um, you could do that from the top down, uh, working from the competitive strategy throughout the whole company, or you could do it from the bottom up in different business units um, and product groups. All right, so let's dig into one example. So Starbucks um, has a balanced scorecard, and there's actually six components to their balanced scorecard. 
Um, the first is product, which uh, you drink, you know, many people drink every day, coffee mainly. Um, the second is their partners, the suppliers and the farmers who produce the coffee. Um, and the customers who generate the revenue, um, uh, the stores and the employees who work in them. And in the U.S., historically, um, Starbucks has spent more on health care for its U.S. employees than it does on the coffee beans that go into its coffee. And upstream, back up to partners for a second, Starbucks actually has allocated out of its corporate treasury uh, between 9 and $12 million that goes to root capital to help fair trade and organic farmers produce great product for to sell that Starbucks sells in its stores. Um, a fifth component is the neighborhood uh, and the communities that uh, Starbucks uh, operates in. And, um, and then uh, finally, last but not least, uh, are the shareholders who are the co-owners of the company, which include the employees of the company. So what Starbucks does is uh, evaluate uh, each of its business decisions from these six criteria. And it's a form of a balanced scorecard that um, uh, not only integrates sustainability, they all lead to profit. Questions so far? Feel free to type in a question. This can be very interactive. OK, then a second example is Alcoa. Alcoa is, uh, if you're not familiar, an aluminum company, global aluminum company. Um, according to Alcoa, one third of all aluminum, whether it be uh, soda pop cans or uh, aluminum that goes in cars, has been recycled since uh, is, and is still in circulation. So highly recyclable product in a highly intensive um, uh, and energy intensive as well as materials intensive um, uh, business. So if you go to alcoa.com slash sustainability, you will find a very deep well of sustainability metrics, um, sustainability decision making, um, and a real commitment from uh, uh, Alcoa, the company, to, um, to integrate sustainability into this business. So what does that mean? So there's six um, categories that Alcoa uses. Sorry, I'm going to look at this other screen here. Um, so I can read them to you. Um, so the first is economic benefit. And if you go to the Alcoa site, you'll see that a strong balance sheet and its relationship of debt and equity to each other so that it's not over leveraged. Um, and we map that into, you know, directly into profit. A strong balance sheet connotes strong profit. A second category is to respect and protect um, people who are the employees. And so there's measures on the Alcoa.com sustainability site um, that look at physical health, the culture of safety, diversity and employee engagement. Now, if you know the history of Alcoa, uh, you know that Paul O'Neill, former Secretary of the Treasury, um, uh, was the CEO of Alcoa for more than a decade and helped multiply its market value from $3 billion to $30 billion by focusing on one core metric, and that metric was safety. So when Paul O'Neill took over at Alcoa, um, injury rates were high, and even um, death rates were uh, more than zero. And what Paul O'Neill did from the top down at the board, executive, and managerial level was focus everybody's performance review and, sustainable, and metrics on employee safety. Now, what happened when you did that was because it was credible and because it was embedded in the management systems, and this is a, score po a core point, this isn't just a scorecard. Scorecards need to be integrated with performance reviews, recognition, and bonuses and promotions. 